In this video, we're going to learn about a wonderful formative assessment tool called Nearpod. Nearpod makes it possible for teachers to control what shows up on their students' computer screens or iPad screens, and they can push out content onto those screens. So a teacher could push out a video to the students' screens, and the students could watch that video on their own screens. A teacher could pose a question, and the students would see that question appear on their screens. They answer the question, and the information is then sent to the teacher. Now those are just a couple of examples of the kinds of things that you can do with Nearpod. Now before we get started, notice the website that I'm on right now, nearpod.com. This is where the teacher should go in order to create Nearpod activities for his or her students. And I'm going to browse down to the bottom of nearpod.com so that you can see that as of this filming, Nearpod is available for the following platforms. iOS, so iPhones, iPads, iPod Touches, also Android, tablets and phones, PC and Mac, computers and laptops, and Windows 8. Now I would expect it to also work well on Chromebooks, but you'll have to test that out if you're interested. Okay, so here on the Nearpod.com screen, you can see that there's a button that you can use to create a free teacher account. And then once you do that, you can just sign up and sign into your account and you can get started. Give me just a second to do that and then we'll continue. Once you've signed in successfully, it should take you into your Nearpod homepage and into your first presentation. And you can see right now it's a blank presentation. Now think of these Nearpod presentations as being a series of screens that you can push out to your students, that you can send out onto their devices. And so don't think of it as just a PowerPoint presentation or keynote presentation. It's a little different. So I'm going to go ahead and add my first slide just by clicking Add Slide. And I have different possible sources for this first slide. I could add content, add web content, or add activity. Let's look at add content first. Notice that there's different types of content that you can add. Let's look first at slides. So I'll just click Add Slide, and it gives me something kind of similar to PowerPoint. I click to add title, and I can just type in the title of my presentation, and then I can go ahead and click to add some text. As it says here, you can add a background into your slide. So to do that, I just click Add Image, and here are some sources of images for my slide. More often than not, I just go here to Google Images and do a search for a picture. And almost without fail, there's a great picture that I can use in my presentation. So I'll just select it and click OK. You can also add some audio if you would like. And again, you can pull audio from these sources or just drag your file here. I'll close out of that. Once you've completed your slide, just click Save. Okay, so that is slide one or screen one that I can push out to my students' devices using Nearpod. Let's make another slide. And again, I'll click on Add Content. The second option you have for adding content is a video. You could click and drag your video here, and there are some limitations about the size of the video and things like that. Or you could pull in your video from one of these sources. But similar to images, sometimes just searching online is the best way to get a video. So I'm going to click here on YouTube and do a search for a video that might help teach what I want to teach my students. I can click on the video to get a preview to make sure it's appropriate and accurate. Once I've found a video that I want to keep, I just click Select and save, and now that video is added as a slide or another screen that I can send out to my students. I could add another slide, add content again, and you can see you can put together a slideshow of images, and those would play on the student devices. You can also use and create some exciting things like virtual reality field trips. Um, you can, again, make an audio slide, PDF viewer, a live Twitter stream, and some of these features are pro features that you might have to pay for or upgrade your account for, but there's some really great things that you can add as content into your Nearpod presentations. You can also add web content. So for example, if there's a website that you would like to pull in to your presentation, you just go to that website, copy the URL for it, or if you know it already, you can just type it in. But either way, you would get that URL into this box. If you want to, you can test the link or just click Save, and it will try to pull in 
that web content into your Nearpod presentation. Now there's one other category of slide that you can create in Nearpod and this is the most exciting part of Nearpod, at least for me. You can add activities into your Nearpod presentations. You can put in an open-ended question for your students. For example, I could create a question like name a proper noun. If I wanted to, I could add an image to this question. It doesn't make sense in this case. And then I'll just click Save. And now I have an open-ended question that I could send out to my students. I'll add another activity. You can see you can make a pull, and it's very easy to do that. Just fill in these boxes. You can also make a quiz. And the quiz could just be one question, or it could be multiple questions. And you can see they're basically multiple choice questions. So give me a minute here to create my own parts of speech quiz that I can administer to my students through Nearpod. Okay, so I've finished creating a two question quiz. And you can see I just filled in the boxes. I do need to remember though to mark the correct answer by clicking the check mark. So if I don't do that, it's not going to be able to know which one is the correct answer. Now that I'm finished, I just click save and I've got now a quiz for my students to take. So I hope you can see the power of these tools that are available in Nearpod. Tools for creating activities for your students to participate in. We also have a draw it activity which is excellent. And basically what this is, is it gives your students a blank whiteboard that they can draw their answer on. So I could put in some instructions here. For example, draw a picture of one of your favorite nouns. Now if I want to, I can include an image to go with this task, but I don't really have to do that. I can just click Save, and my students will be able to draw on their iPad and whatever they draw will be sent to me as their teacher. Back in Add Slide, Add Activity, I want you to also know you can easily create a fill in the blank activity and you just type or paste in your text, click Next, and then select the words that you want to be added to the word bank and taken out of your text. When you're done, just click Done. And there is one more type of activity that you can add, but as you can see, it's reserved for the Gold Edition of Nearpod. So you would have to upgrade and pay a fee in order to use this memory game. I'm going to X out of that. But hopefully you can see that even with the free account that you have with Nearpod, you can make some amazing activities. All right, now to finish off this presentation so that my students can experience these activities, what I need to do is title my presentation up here in the upper left. Yes, I already put in a title on a slide, but you also need to have a title for your presentation. I can just click outside the box to save that. And then in order for my students to be able to actually play this activity, I will need to publish. So I'll click publish down here at the bottom. I could put in a description for this presentation if I'd like to. Put in what grades it's for. Click subject. In this case, Language Arts. Click Publish. So now I can push this content out to my students' devices, whether they're iPads, whether they're Android devices, or laptops or desktops, it doesn't matter. I can click this symbol here to create a live session of this activity. You can see it says students can join by opening the Nearpod app on another device or by going to nearpod.com and putting this pin into the Join Session box. So I'll click OK, got it, so you can see the pin. And let's look at what that would be like for students on a computer, and then we'll also look on the iPad. So here on a computer, a student would just go to nearpod.com. There's the button that says Enter Pin to Join a Lesson. They just click there, and then they put in this code. And notice that you can also share that code in various other ways with your students. But if they paste in the code or type in the code, and then click to enter the activity. They'll be able to put in their name and it has an optional other box as well. This could be for student number or email address or whatever you want it to be. And then just click send and now the student is able to experience the lesson as the teacher advances through the lesson. Okay, let's look at the same thing but on an iPad. So this is the Nearpod iPad app, but there's also apps for Android. And you can see that there's multiple buttons here at the right that can be tapped on. Most of those are for the teacher, because you as the teacher can administer your Nearpod activities using your iPad if you would like. But for the students, they'll pretty much want to just go down to Join. So they just tap there. They enter the session pin. Okay, and now they just tap that arrow to join the activity. 
and it downloads the presentation onto their device. So the student would put his or her name into Nearpod, tap send, and then they're right into the activity that the teacher has created. So let's look back at the website. The teacher is signed into the Nearpod website, and at any time when the teacher is ready, he or she can click next to advance to the next bit of content that they want to share and push out to the student devices. As soon as I click that arrow, look what happened to the student iPads. It advanced to the next item, which is a video, and the students can now tap the play button, and the video will load and play, unless YouTube is blocked at the school, of course, and sound would come out of the student's iPads in this case, so just be aware of that. You might want to have earphones or headphones for the students if you're going to use video or audio. Back on the teacher account, when I'm ready, I just click the next button. And this next item, if you recall, is a website. That website is also pushed out onto the student's devices. And notice that it is an interactive website. The students can use the website from within the Nearpod app. They can read it. They can tap on things to interact with the website. It works very similar to just a regular web page. Back on the teacher account, I can click Next to go to the next activity. If you remember, this is the open open-ended question for the students to answer. Let's look at what that looks like on the student devices. They see the question, name a proper noun, they tap to enter their answers, and then tap send. They confirm that they do want to send it, and back on the teacher account, you can see after a second or two, it updates, and I can see which students have answered, which have not, and what their answers are. If a student gives a particularly great answer, you could click share and on the student devices they will see this good answer. It'll be pushed out to them so that they can see it. Jumping back into the teacher account, I'll click next and you can see the next item is a quiz on the parts of speech. Here on the student device, I just tap go and the quiz begins. Students can tap to select the right answer tap next to go to the next question. When they're done, they can tap next to submit their final answers. And then as the teacher, I can see the results as they come in. When I'm ready, I'll advance to my next activity. Notice that this is the drawing activity. And look what you get. You get a little thumbnail of every iPad or other device that is connected to your Nearpod activity. And you can watch as the students answer your questions. Here's what it looks like on the student device. Draw a picture of one of your favorite nouns. Okay, so this particular student is drawing a tree, I guess. And as you can see, there's some tools in the lower left corner for colors and for different pens. And you can switch from pen to highlighter. You can use text, pictures, photos, and there is an eraser, which is pretty important. When the student's done, they just tap send confirm that they want to send it, and look at the teacher account. After a second or two, the teacher gets to see what the students have drawn. Let's click Next to go to the next activity. This is the fill in the blank activity, and on the student devices, they get a word bank at the bottom that they can tap on and drag and put the words where they think they go, and then tap Done. They get a little bit of feedback, they tap Close, and the teacher now can tap Done when they're finished, and that's the end of this particular Nearpod presentation. So I can just go up to the top here where it says Nearpod and click, and I can get a report of how the students did and the questions that they answered and how well they answered them. I can also end the lesson. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'll click yes, and it takes the students out of the lesson. Now, anytime I want to, I can go back and look at how my students did on this particular activity. To do that, I can just go here to the home button and you can see there's links to my library of activities that I've created or that I have collected. And there's some other buttons here that are important, but there at the bottom is the reports button. I can click it and it shows a history of activities that I've done with my students using Nearpod. And I can just click on this particular one. It shows the session, the date and time. I click on it and it gives me some data that I can use for formative evaluation or assessment. I can see which students are getting it, which ones are struggling. I can see some charts here that let me know how the students are doing. And if you click on quiz, it'll show you the particular questions. 
and how the students performed on each particular question. Maybe I need to improve my questions or maybe I as the teacher need to teach the content a little bit more carefully in order to help the students be more successful. Notice that I also have a record of the open-ended answers that the students gave and the drawings that they turned in. So what a nice way to do some formative assessment. When I'm done, I can just X out of that to get back. Now in this video, I was demonstrating the website as the way that the teacher interacts with Nearpod and uses Nearpod. But that's not necessarily what you have to do. As a teacher, you could use your smartphone or a tablet like an iPad to control the activity and to send it out to your students. So it's really up to you. Nearpod works well on any number of different devices. Now just be aware that some of the features I've shown in this presentation may be silver or gold level activities that you might need to upgrade for. You can see that you can get a temporary gold account if you do some things. And when you sign up, I believe you automatically get a temporary silver account. But even if you want to use Nearpod just for free at the most basic level, I think that you'll find it's very useful and a wonderful tool for formative assessment that you can use with your students. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students.